Maybe you're tired of the grind and wondering if there's a better way of living your life. Maybe you've tried reading up on financial independence and retiring early. Maybe you've already started the journey of saving up and cutting back your expenses. And you're left wondering if you'll be able to make it. Well, I'm here to tell you what signs to look for that will indicate whether you will retire early or not. I have identified some common patterns and themes that separate those that are able to successfully retire early from those that can never seem to save enough. So here we go, 5 signs you will retire early. Number 1. Your day job generates high disutility. Now I quickly want to touch on the topic of utility and disutility here. Utility is a fancy economics term for the joy or satisfaction we receive from any activity, good or service. Disutility is the opposite. It is the misery that you receive from any activity. A shopping trip or the purchase of a fancy car or a nice dinner out all generate utility but it doesn't necessarily have to involve spending a lot of money. Gardening might produce utility for many. Reading a good book will do it too. A pleasant walk in good weather or a strenuous hike in bad weather may both yield utility for different people. Now this brings me to your day job. A job can yield varying levels of utility for different people. Even for a job that a person would quit if they won the lottery, that individual may actually find their job somewhat interesting or very tolerable versus someone else. A good way to see this is not whether or not you hate your job, but to what degree you find it tolerable. Factors including, but not limited to, a relaxed workplace, short commute, respect from peers, autonomy, strong social relationships at work, that is to say, good work friends, and good work-life balance can all generate positive utility from working, even if that work is not someone's passion. Conversely, a lack of many or all of the above factors can create disutility from work, that is, bring you misery. Therefore, one sign that you will retire early is just how great of a disutility your work generates. How much misery does your work cause you? If it is high, you may very well decide that it's a better idea to save up and leave the workforce as fast as possible. Number two, the opportunity cost of working your day job is very high. Ask yourself this, what would I rather be doing? While there are many valid answers, there are many invalid answers too. Answers like sitting on a beach, not commuting, playing video games all day are not things you want to do per se, but rather things you want to do as a reaction to your day job. They are things you'll get tired of fairly quickly. When I talk about what you'd rather be doing, I'm talking about something that you absolutely want to do. Something that is your calling, but you are not able to pursue it due to pragmatic considerations. Every minute that you spend not doing this thing is a dull pain that lives with you constantly. I've heard people say that they would continue to work if they won the lottery. These are individuals who really haven't put a lot of thought into what they'd rather be doing. Essentially, the opportunity cost for them to continue working at their day job is very low. There's nothing else that they yearn to do. Do you ever yearn? Yearn? Do I yearn? <laughs> I yearn. They have not really thought hard about it. Here's another way of thinking about it. If you are guaranteed a decent wage, let's just say twice the median wage with a little extra thrown in, and in exchange, you would have to do a job any job, but you'd have to work 40 hours a week, what would that job be? And it can't be something you think up on the spot. It has to be something you have thought about, perhaps even planned or are already doing at a low intensity. In summary, people who do not have anything that they'd much rather be doing will continue to work their day jobs even if they are not passionate about it. And the need to retire will be less strong if not non-existent. Number three, you think of opportunity costs when you think about money. You think about opportunity costs whenever you think about spending money. For me, a $10,000 expense today is equivalent to an $80,000 expense 20 to 25 years from now. Similarly, a $100,000 saved today will be worth $800,000 in 25 years. Consider a car purchase. 
you can buy a $15,000 car that gets you from A to B in relative comfort or a $55,000 car that also gets you from A to B but also gives you status. What is the cost of this status? The status you get from driving a $15,000 car versus a $55,000 car. Well, the price difference is over quarter million dollars in inflation adjusted terms over 20 to 25 years. After taking into account opportunity costs, more expensive maintenance, more expensive gas and more expensive insurance for the more expensive vehicle. It might be worth it for some as long as they know what they want. For me, I'd rather take the money. Now I know not all expenses can be avoided, but those who retire early are very cognizant of opportunity costs when they spend money. Remember, every dollar spent frivolously in your 20s is $4 borrowed from your 40s. Number four, you have low adherence to convention. This is a big one. How much do you value the opinion of others? Can you live in a way that no one around you is living? Are you okay driving an old car, living in a modest place, wearing simple clothes and eating modestly? How much does external validation matter to you? And how much of your self-worth is determined extrinsically? Are you okay not being seen? Do you seek validation? Do you often do things to impress others? Your answers to these questions will determine how likely you're going to be to build substantial savings and retire early. And finally, number five, you are introverted. Now this is somewhat related to the previous point. Introverts are okay with being by themselves. Social interactions generally require money. A study found that introverts need to spend less on luxury goods to project status, at least when low income groups of introverts and extroverts are compared. The findings suggest that extroverts compensate for having low income by spending more on items and experiences that reflect higher status. Introverts tend to find joy in cheaper, solitary activities such as watching a movie by themselves, reading a book, working out, cooking, etc. Now I don't want to scare the extroverts out there. It should be noted that extroverts are more likely to build strong professional connections and take on more leadership roles that may very well lead to higher incomes. And if these individuals are able to stay disciplined and translate those higher incomes into higher savings, they'll also be able to create substantial savings and thereby retire early if they want to. So to conclude, how much do you want financial freedom? How much do you value your time? Is the promise of the life you want greater than the comforts of the life you have? Is the pain of not living the life you wished you were living greater than the security of the life that you are living now? Remember that ultimately it's not about money, but rather time. How much of it you have and how well you spend it. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Cheers. It should be noted that extroverts are more likely to build deeper professional collection. Fuck me.